Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Spectrum Drama. We're going to be bringing you some of the hottest posts on Spectrum this week. Um, and we're going to dive into them, have a little moan, have a little chat, and just generally give our thoughts on it. Before we go any further, um, I think we'd just like to take a minute to thank everyone who subscribed to us. Um, you know, we're up to 250 subscribers now, which is nice. And um, yeah, big thank you to everyone. Definitely. Big thank you. Um, we're actually going up quite fast, considering we're a small channel. Doing well. And uh, it's thanks to our listeners. Definitely. Yeah. Keep listening. And we'll keep talking. <laughs> Okay, with that out of the way, uh, first up, we've got a post from Fox. Uh, he says, or she says, I want to be sexist, uh, I don't have access <laughs> to any of the testing focus ships to test. Uh, basically, don't seem to have any access to ships now from the uh, testing list um, in the PTU, which is a shame and a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, it's a big pain in the ass for us um, due to our ship reviews uh, mm. not having access to ships we don't own is gonna cause us some problems but yeah i mean this is different to what the way they've done it before usually in the ptu you have access to a large selection of ships to play around with um but this time we don't um might be down to uh, ship buying in the pu coming up mm. maybe it's something uh, like a, a different reason we don't know speculation I mean I think you're probably right there I think that maybe it's got kind of something to do with the fact that you've got obviously yeah you're buying maybe, dude. am I oh my uh, bloody uh, things went out of sync again <clears throat> right um yeah I think you're right there I think um it's probably got something to do with the fact that obviously we're gonna be able to buy ships now rent ships um, and if you just give everyone the ships, then you're not going to be able to gauge how the ship renting is going to work and all that kind of stuff, maybe. Um, but, you know, it is a pain. It's a big pain for us. Yeah, like you said, it, we're not going to be able to bring as many ship reviews as we want um, because, let's face it, we're not rich. We can't afford to buy every ship. Um, so, um, yeah, it's a bit of a pain. I was actually considering, I don't know, I'll put it out to everyone, um, doing some form of a beg for money type thing. Um, you know, if people are really enjoy the reviews and if people are interested to see what we can do, um, maybe a little donation here or there might not go amiss and we could, uh, mm. we could buy some of these ships maybe, I don't know. Just an idea. Uh, uh, we'll have to look at a few options. I mean, we could also message CIG about giving us access to a couple I very much doubt they will but we could ask yeah I mean we're small fry but you know we're passionate so uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so we'll have to see but yeah it's definitely a bit of a pain it, it, you know it would be nice to have access to it but I can kind of see now where they're heading you know before they wanted everyone in there all the ships just to you know spam it out and see what they're like now they need to kind of work on that kind of ship rent or ship sale platform and, and see where it takes us so. yeah when 3.3 goes live on the PU um, and they open up the PTU for the Hurston testing mm -hmm. maybe they'll change it again and um, give everyone a bunch of ships to, to test out but uh, we'll have to wait and see okay so on a similar theme uh, we've got a post from E4-BC4-QF3-QF7 <laughs> well, that's um, oh yeah yeah i think that that's um some sort of a hex code or something for the color of his eyes i don't know um but yes this is to do with ship prices being too high um the same general gripe that we did touch on i think a week or two weeks ago um ship prices are far too high you know for people who are starting out and trying to work their way up to a fighter ship you know you're looking at weeks and weeks and weeks of gameplay etc etc um <clears throat> and basically yeah prices are too high um i'm now on the fence about this a little bit and i'll delve into that in a minute but yeah i definitely want to see what your uh your taking is yet a couple of weeks down the line how do you feel about it now yeah he 
I mean, I don't know where the math came from, but he's worked out that it's 124 hours of game, uh, well, I suppose, mission running time. Yeah. Um, to afford a uh, Hornet. Now, that, is that too long? Um, I mean, it is long. Yeah. But is it too long? Probably not. I mean, they, they want it to be an investment when you buy a new ship, and it definitely will be. The problem we're going to have is uh, when the actual insurance uh, mechanic is brought in is if you lose that ship, uh, like how much is it going to cost you uh, yeah. to get it back? Um, and imagine if you didn't have it insured and you lose a ship. Ouch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a big kick in the ass. I mean, a few weeks ago, I was adamant that it's just un- unreal, ridiculous how much these ships cost but the more I've thought about it and the more that I've seen the the past couple of weeks you know with um, 3.3 coming out and all that stuff kind of seeing what the plans are it, it really isn't that much I mean it is expensive but then it's a spaceship of course it's expensive um, you know and 120 hours plus of gameplay to get something of value like a spaceship makes sense to me you know um, I mean, I put I put that much in in a week in WoW, you know, to get one bit of armor. So, you know, to get a spaceship makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely going to be some serious goals to work towards. And it, I mean, it would be kind of boring if you could get every ship in like two hours of running missions. Because yeah, then then what are you going to do? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, every, you know, there's there's people here who are very rightly saying, you know if it was you know five or ten hours to get that ship and if it was only 124 hours imagine if everyone could just be in javelins just everyone everyone's end game basically <laughs> you know within 100 hours of gameplay that's not how this game's designed it's not a solo single player game it's a it's a universe you have to earn shit in you know and uh I, th- I think it does make sense. I mean, when I first saw the price of the Aurora, I did think to myself, come on, really? <laughs> That's just yeah. insane. But, you know, now that you think about it, maybe not. Maybe that's not that insane. Maybe it, it should be expensive because we should work for it, you know? Definitely. I am I actually quite like the idea of these expensive ships. Um, it's going to be a bit of a problem to begin with because if they... Um, update with a patch and reset the database uh, yeah. and we all start from scratch again uh, trying to grind those ship a ship back is just going to get really boring uh, yeah. doing the same thing over and over again sort of to get the same ship over and over again oh yeah uh, definitely but once persistence is in properly and they don't have to do that as much then uh, it's going to be a bit beneficial yeah the other the other issue that I can foresee um, is you know, when the game is, let's say the game is released, if they do wipe everyone and you start from scratch kind of thing, I know that's probably a lot unlikely, but when we get to that state of persistence, you're going to have this big kind of universe full of people, and uh, well, unless you've got tons of money, full of people who just have a runaround ship. There's going to be nobody doing any tasks, any mining, any salvaging, any of that stuff. Because they've got to now earn the money again to buy a salvaging or a you know a mining ship. So I think for a while there's going to be this kind of big gap where all the people who can't afford to buy them with real money will just be grinding like demons. So uh, yeah, be interesting I think. But um, no, I'm on a plus note. They're talking. Uh, well, I say they're talking about it. I think they're actually putting into. Um, the Hurston patch uh, ship rentals so if you really want that Hornet badly mm. just rent it for a little bit and help get through missions a bit quicker yeah that's the thing I mean you know if you can rent a reasonably powerful ship then you should be able to smash through missions quicker and therefore bring that time down um, you'll never be able to get back the time you spend messing around picking up missions and flying here there and everywhere but the actual mission itself will be a bit easier, so you know, there's ways around it. Yeah. Next up, we've got a post from Cat, uh, who says proximity VoIP is more important than friend VoIP uh, because then you can meet strangers. 
as we all like to do, uh, squad players will use Discord anyway. Um, so the gist of this is basically, it's more important for VoIP to be available, um, you know, not close proximity, um, if that makes sense. Um, like, you know, you're not going to use it in place of Discord, but you are likely to use it to, say, chat to random strangers in, you know, wherever you are in a bar or whatever. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, the other thing that um, he or she... The, the, the picture's a little vague um, touches on is some form of like a proximity radio or loudspeaker or something so that you know if someone comes flying into a, um, a landing pad or something um, you have the ability to hail them almost um, stuff like that I mean it's a good idea what do you think um, yeah I mean I agree with that proximity VoIP is kind of more important than squad VoIP um, I, I would agree that if you are in a squad, generally you you're going to be using, or you have the ability to use something like Discord or Teamspeak or something. Yeah. Um, so it's not as important right now. Um, proximity VoIP is definitely more important. Uh, if you meet some random person on the moon and want to find out if they're going to shoot you or not, <laughs> um, it, it, you know, it would help. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I like the idea of the the, the in-game squad VoIP for like uh, recording purposes or immersion because you get that kind of come in type sound. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, it's it's very interesting. I think a lot of I think a lot of people will use that, especially if they are slightly more role play esque. Um, yeah, you know, they're definitely going to want to use that. But he definitely right. I mean, proximity VoIP is more than just for the social aspect is an important thing in being able to um, yeah figure out if you're about to get killed and stuff like that so um, yeah it's definitely going to be a useful way to <laughs> to implement VoIP but um, yeah I think we'd probably stick to Discord because it's clearer and I don't want to have to keep saying what you say <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, yeah yeah, I mean, there's um, a couple of guys here mentioning about a bit having the ability to mute people um, if they start doing something stupid like playing music down their microphone. Yeah. Um, and, but, I mean, yeah, agreed. People can do that. We saw that in Planet Side a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just one of those things. People on the internet, what yeah. you can do. You just, you've got, you take the rough with the smooth, I mean... If yeah. they piss you off, just shoot them. Exactly, yeah. I mean, you know, if someone comes up to me in the street and starts going, blah, 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 eventually I'm going to punch him. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, so um, just do that. Yeah. Problem solved. <laughs> so next up, we've got a post from Double DHZ. It says, can we fix the launcher, please? Um, long and short of this and it's something that grates on me I cannot even describe to you how much um, you know you open up your launcher and you get a launch game button now if you don't know any better you're just going to click that and go into the game but you're probably running an older build um, because it can take um, I mean he says 15-20 seconds which is about right um, sometimes longer I've had it before had where it's been minutes like 3, 4, 10 minutes you know I had one the other day, it was five minutes. I, was, I tried twice to log into the game and just got black screen every time. Yeah. And then it decided to update. It's just ridiculous. I mean, it is the most fundamental aspect of this game is the ability to launch it and you can't get that right. I mean, don't get me wrong, <laughs> the rest of this game is phenomenal so far, but these little things are just so frustrating to players when all they want to do is jump in and play the game and they have to, they have to play some sort of guessing game with a button so, yeah silly. I agree there was I don't know if it was this guy or someone else uh, I know it's this guy mentions it in in the original post um, if it just had a little bit of text on the bottom of the launcher saying you know searching for updates and then you'd know to wait yeah until it says it's ready to go yeah I mean other games do it in fact almost all games do that um, but then I mean bear in mind we were playing a game that didn't even have load screens for like years so um, yeah 
so you, you know you 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 you've got to kind of expect it. But yeah, I think that's something that is surely is an easy fix. Um, you know, and um, fix it. So last but not least, we've got a post from Tout who says third person POV should be disabled in combat. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Should third person POV should be disabled in combat? What do you think? Um, uh, yeah, I get the point. Um, it would stop people peeking around corners using the third person camera, mm -hmm. um, which can be a little cheaty. Uh, I ag agree with that, but um, that would cause a few issues with content creators, uh, like what we want to do with our story series. Yes. Um, not having the third person camera could kind of break that whole aspect. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who are going to be playing this game for that aspect um, and they're going to need it. So the only way around that would be to have some form of like a, I don't know, a developer tag that you could have that says, I'm allowed, but um, that mm. still wouldn't work. I mean, either way, yeah. you, you, it does ruin the immersion being able to kind of go, Bing, oh, I'm outside my ship like a ghost. Um, but yeah. You need if it. that's needed at the moment, some of the biggest ships trying to land those things. <laughs> yeah. Can't do it without a third person camera. No, and I mean, you know, you, you I mean, it, unless they can come up with some really ingenious, like, um, like parking cameras almost that show you, you know, I mean, because technically on ships you should have, you should be able to trust your altitude for a start, which you can't do in any of these ships. Um, no. um I know what they're, they're getting at because some of the, peaks are higher than sea level I'm assuming or whatever they want to call their base level but um, yeah. no I mean an altimeter should just show you how far you are from a hard surface <laughs> um, yeah and if that worked it'd be so much easier to land and you know for example if you had let's say some sort of a scanner under big ships uh, I've gone off to bit topic here but never mind uh, stick with me uh, if you had some sort of like a scanner underneath ships that could uh, show you obstructions um, in like a wire mesh type thing on a screen somewhere that just says, oh, I'm about to hit a rock. You know what I mean? Then it would do away with the need for the camera. But we need it because every now and then we want to just look awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I guess eventually they will put some sort of, uh, you know, parking sensor type mechanic onto ships. I'm sure yeah. they will. Yeah. But it's not a massive priority right now. No, third person um, works. So. Yeah. And the actual, um, the actual uh, advantage of using third person in combat, I think actually, you know, this isn't a first person shooter that you've got third person. So it's not like when you could play armor in third person and peek over a wall to see where people are. You're not doing that in space. There's no walls. Um, you know, I mean, fair enough. Maybe on the ground I can kind of see it, but when you're flying and stuff. It's, it, it's irrelevant. I can't imagine wanting to fly in third person because I get a better view out of my cockpit of where, you know, what I'm aiming at, where I'm going. So Yeah, you, it won't get any advantage in, in uh, flying no. using the third person. Um, it's more in the first when you're uh, on foot. I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it can give you a, an advantage of peeking around corners. But yeah, uh, yeah un until they kind of come up with another way of doing the director cam, uh, I don't see this changing anytime soon. No. I think um, what would be a good sort of straight down the middle solution would be when you get in a vehicle, you have the option of third person. When you go into first person, when you get get out of a ship, then you, you have first person. But yeah, like you said, it's going to just kill everyone's, um, you know, use of, of director cam and stuff like that. And I don't know. It just... It's going to be really frustrating. Yeah, I don't really see a way of doing it without breaking some content creation aspects. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you, don't really know. You basically have to do what everyone else does in first-person shooters um, that have third-person, like armor, is um, you're just going to have to be better than these other people because, yeah, they're going to have this sixth sense of where you are, but just outshoot them and you'll be fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's basically all you can do in armor. You know, if you like playing it first person like I do, and someone else plays it third person, you have a disadvantage. But just go hell for, hell for leather, as they say, and uh, 
give them what for and all the other sayings I can't think of. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah just um, yeah, just just I tell you what, Tao, be better. <laughs> did, did you just throw a, a get good? <laughs> I did. I actually threw my phone. <laughs> I was making a point, um, but yeah, you know, with no disrespect, I'd say just um, uh, keep this quiet because if you ruin our ability to film, I'll be really annoyed, and um, <laughs> and then don't, and then we'll come and protect you if you're in a gunfight. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that wraps up this week's Spectrum Drama. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more Star Citizen content. If you disagree with any of our opinions or you just want to have a chat about some of these, um, let us know in the comments below. We'll always answer. Um, we're definitely up for a good uh, constructive conversation about this stuff. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.